Hey everyone, it's Alan over at Cobblers Plus and thank you for joining us. In today's video, we're going to be doing some interesting work that I haven't shown in any of my videos on a pair of these Luke Casey Classics. So come join us and check out an interesting job that we're doing. This might be a little bit of a hint. Stay tuned. Again, thank you for joining us and like I said we're gonna be doing some interesting work on these Luke Casey classics and I say interesting because for us cobblers it's kind of a normal thing it's very common that we do them but uh, I haven't done a video on them and I thought it'd be perfect for these um, because we're doing a lot of other stuff to them too uh, but for these ones we're going to, instead of doing a full sole, the gentleman requested that we do a half sole on them, JR Leather Half Sole, which I know some of you are saying like, well, why not just do the full sole and everything? Well, you know, this gentleman wants it that way. You know, it, if he wants it that way, it's his decision to make. He's getting an upgrade with the half sole here, and then this back end is gonna have a finish anyways on it that's gonna protect it, you know, from any kind of water damage as well. So this is what's called a half sole, and the half sole will end up replacing the leather from here to right about here behind the ball of the foot typically, and if the camera, I don't know what angle I'm at right now, but we'll replace it from here, at the toe to behind the ball of the foot right there and so that's a half sole there for you uh, the gentleman also requested a few additional interesting things he wants the heel replaced with a uh, jr dovetail heel which you will see that here in a little bit but uh, again it's interesting for me because i haven't done a video on a half sole yet at least not on a pair of uh, western boots or dress shoes either so this way you can actually be able to see all the steps that goes into it and everything um, half soles are typically more cost effective because it doesn't involve having to you know remove everything and just kind of rebuild it all and everything it's it's resoling it off of the original sole still because as you can tell these come pre-beveled already here so they're slightly thinner right there and that beveling kind of connects the original sole into the new sole in other words so that's how a half sole works and you'll see that here in just a little bit as we go along so let me go ahead and get everything all kind of together and uh let's start breaking these down well not completely breaking them down but just uh just enough so we can get that half sole to work on there beautifully so let me get everything together now all right so typically with a with a half sole what happens is we go through like this we'll mark it with a pen here and right here and that's going to be where the half sole starts now the problem is that these jr half soles are a little bit on the larger size so i'm actually going to have to cut them down first a little bit i want to see how the jr is going to be centered on here Let's see, probably be a best bet. Well, we'll probably end up actually cutting off the, the sole after. All right, so first things first, gotta take off the top lift. And yes, that's what this is called. It's called a top lift heel. So I'm trying to see what I, area to pull it up from will be the best, okay. Some pretty good glue whoever put these on let's see uh, long life heels so yeah it looks like it's an aftermarket heel not an original one so whoever whatever cobbler did the heels on it at least they did did it with some decent glue on there sometimes we get uh you know a pair of boots or shoes in that somebody had used cheap glue on and the whole thing is just ready to peel off now what i'm pulling out here through the top these are what are called wire nails they're shot in by a machine it's called the auto solar and it basically has a roll of wire on there and it just cuts the nail or not the, nail, the wire and basically turns it into a nail like that it's actually very common in the cobbler trade um, we don't use them often but uh 
sometimes we have to, especially when it's like a cheap heel base. A lot of times uh, people want their boots or shoes just resold and rehealed, or even just rehealed basically. Um, and the heel base is on the verge of wanting to fall off unless we secure it properly somehow. So we'll end up re-gluing the heel base as best we can. And then as an extra precaution, we have to run wire nail in there to make sure that it's holding together for as long as possible. Yes, I know obviously at that point it'd be ideal to replace the heel base, but some people just don't want the heel base replaced. They just need the boots to get by for maybe one or two more years longer. Um, and so they just want it fixed up, which is a common thing we see all the time. Now, after we do that, we're gonna go ahead and mark where the half sole is going to be. Now, obviously I'm gonna have to trim up this half sole and cut it out a little bit better, but I'm at least gonna just use this as a guide for my marking on the sole. So like that, there. And then one more marking is where I'm actually gonna cut off the old sole. So I'll just take this off real quick. If I can get it back off. All right, let's take it out all with the last there. All right, so the first marking is where the half sole is actually gonna be starting but we need a little bit of the original sole to underlap because this is gonna overlap with that beveled edge. So we need to actually cut off the old sole right there at that second line that we made. So that's gonna be the two lines that we need to do. All right, grab my knife there. just cutting the sole off we're cutting through the stitches because these are stitched on so during this process we're basically splitting the adhesive that's holding everything down and the stitches simultaneously okay there we go now most of the time with half soles the way it's done is that we only cut through just past where the sole is right here. So I'll show you real quick. Let me grab a different knife, cut this off and get it out of the way for you right away. It's a lot easier on my other last, but I'm still over at the other workbench. There we go. So we've got that cut off there. We're going to use that as our pattern to figure out how everything's going to be centered and everything. Now, yes, I know some of you are saying, oh, it's uneven. Yes, it's uneven because it's going to be sanded anyways, obviously. Um, we only need just a little bit, roughly about an inch, give or take. But a lot of this is going to be sanded down as well. But this gives you an idea. So at this point, this is a, right about there is where we undo the sole to see where the knife is sticking out there I had to double check if it's actually even visible on the camera let me readjust it a little bit for you but right there is where we take it apart to because we're not taking off the heel base on these so that's as far as we need to go and uh, that way we're able to remove all the old stitches and then get ready to re-stitch it so take these off man that last does not want to come out sometimes there we go all right so at this point we're basically done taking this one apart here our next step is going to be sanding and i still got to do the other boot all also obviously is sanding i'm going to go ahead and trace out the the sole here because i want to center that jr logo as much as possible and it's quite literally just tracing like that and this area where I have to pretend that this is the boot itself I have to kind of extend it out just a little bit and then do a straight line across right about there. I will make sure to measure it out before I do final cuts and stuff like that. I'm going to actually 
cut it a little bit below here and see how everything lines up. Dang it. Oh, there's the pen marking. Almost didn't see it there. This is strictly more of an aesthetics thing to try to get that JR logo to be as centered as possible, but aesthetics are sometimes, you know, one of the most important parts of it. You want a nice pair of boots, right? You know, that little fine detail like that definitely makes, uh, makes a world of difference. So let me go ahead and take off the other boot real quick, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut off a portion of this real quick and see how everything lines up, and then if I need to, I'll cut it more, more, and then finally I'll be able to cut out right where I left the ink marking like that there. So I'll be back in just a little bit. Alright everyone, so as you've seen, we got everything sanded down, so this is kind of slightly beveled right there. We got the half soles pre-cut already, kind of traced out and cut to the original soles there, at least uh, to center that JR sole. Obviously the edges aren't nice and pretty, but it's just enough to make sure that we try to center this piece as much as possible with that JR logo. Now. We can only do the best we can, obviously, and plus it's going to wear out. I know a lot of you are going to say, well, it's going to wear out anyways. Yes, it's going to wear out, so that's just one of those things. Now, you'd see me uh, using the stitch, uh, the thread puller on our shine machine there, and uh, that takes out the bulk of the stitching, but there's always a few stragglers here and there missing um, that end up getting pulled. So we're going to use our little plucker here. Well, it's kind of an awl, actually. And this one got bent and got turned into a plucking tool basically at that point. It does perfect for it. I know some of you are probably thinking like, well, why would you do a half sole for JR? Because some people wanted to. There's a number of reasons why half soles are done. Nobody really shows them on videos. I actually, because I mostly do videos a lot of times and do weird projects. I haven't done a pair of half soles in a long time, so I just realized that when I was standing there sanding these up. But you can do it because this back area doesn't tend to get a lot of wear. The ball of foot, however, does. So it saves on uh, money, obviously, is one. And for some people, they want something unique and different. And this gentleman, that's what he was after. He wanted something unique and different and decided to go for the half sole option. Something that... Uh, Cobblers don't tend to show off too much. Everyone shows off the full soles. 
So I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to do a video for you guys on how, how half soles are done. Handful of cobblers though also, also look at it as a cheap way and they don't wanna they don't want to spook anyone thinking that oh they only do full soles. No, they do half soles too. Don't worry. Everyone, every cobbler, if they're experienced enough, they're gonna do the half soles. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through the rest of this, pluck all the stitches, and then we're gonna fill this in with cork because this original sole did have a cushion right there that got cut out and the cushion's all worn out, it's just shot. So it's not like we can reuse it or you know, replacing it with another piece of cushion isn't the best thing anyways because they wear out and absorb a lot more moisture and doesn't wick it away because it's a synthetic. Cork will be better. There isn't too much room to really fill this in. I mean, technically we could skip the cork if we wanted to, but we don't take shortcuts like that. So we're going to be sure to fill in some cork, at least, even though it's going to be a thin layer, but it's going to be just enough to add that cushion, insulation, and support features. Once I got that filled up, then we can start gluing everything up and uh, sticking it together. So I'll do that, and we'll see you back here in a little bit. All right, everyone. So I've got the other boot on the press already, but I wanted to show you real quick. So we've got it all filled in. Right back here is just a little bit of that original foam. Obviously, we can't replace the foam under there. Otherwise, it gets really lopsided, and you're going to feel that under your foot after a couple of wears once everything starts breaking in. So we just replaced the cork right in that area. That's one of the downsides with uh, half soles is uh, we can't replace the cork underneath, and also if the shank is damaged, we can't really get in there. It, it's just more practical to do full soles at that point regardless. But, um, but again, half soles, if there's nothing else wrong and these don't have anything else really wrong, we've checked the shanks and stuff, there's no other damages, it's, uh, you know, they're gonna they're gonna be just perfectly fine but to give you kind of perspective so here's that uh half uh, the original sole right there so you've got this little notch right there if the camera can catch it you got a notch going down it's not completely 90 degree angle it's uh slightly sloped that's how it is on the sanders if we want a 90 degree angle we have to cut that by hand but in our case we don't want a full 90 degree angle we want roughly i would say close to about 50 45 to 50 45 to 50 degree angle roughly and that's what that uh, sander allows for us and then from then it, there it kind of bevels downward now this area that is peeled up obviously we get glue all under there and everything make sure that it's glued back down and uh, we leave that up until we're ready to stick so we press that down by hand and then we take the sole out of the oven so it's nice and toasty and that way the heat will transfer from this because I pulled it out of the oven. We definitely have to make sure these are heated up. Oh, that's really warm. To make sure that they're pliable and it helps activate the adhesive. Now, the sole, ah, oh, that is hot. The half sole, we do overlap over that area where we started the sanding um, and it's beveled over here. So we're gonna be having that overlap a little more visible here in just a second after some hammering. It's warm though, I got a hammer. And this is where the French hammer comes into play with that little dovetail style heel and or tail basically. They're all a little bit different. But this allows us to press down like that very well. Surprisingly, some cobblers actually don't know about this. I, have, I didn't realize that. It was kind of weird hearing about it. And someone said, oh, I didn't know that that's what it was for. And then if you got a really good hammer, if it's a really stubborn sole, I mean, you can do this right there if you have to. But in this case, we don't. So now this gives you kind of a little more perspective there. That overlap lays right there. And so when we start sanding it, everything ends up being nice and flush and smooth. And uh, just like that. So now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and take this over to the press. And this is why I love our press. It doesn't do all of it at once. We're able to concentrate the pressure right in this general area. So it applies as much pressure here as possible. Let that sit and cure for a minute. And then we'll switch over to the toes. And then finally, once it's off the press, we'll go through all around the welt press. Press everything down right here. Make sure it bonds. And then let this sit and cure overnight. And tomorrow morning, I'll be back in. Get ready to start trimming things up. Cutting off all this excess there and everything and uh, continue on. So we'll see you back here in a bit. 
All right, everyone, so we're back here again with these. We've got everything glued up, I trimmed up some of the excess there. Now we're gonna go ahead and trim it up here on our trimmer, touch it up a little bit here on the sandpaper belt and uh, do the uh, channel on this as well. Now, there is obviously this lip right here. I'm actually gonna go ahead and hit that on ca off of camera on our other machine, which has a much smoother sandpaper on it, but in order not to have to shift around between the machines with the camera it's just gonna be easier if i just run over there real quick sand it up and then i'll be able to do the um channeling here but uh, as far as like the channel goes obviously on most western boots we don't uh we don't pre-channel them but this gentleman did request a particular color for stitching so we do have to channel it so it kind of features it a little bit more but otherwise we usually do a closed channel and with the colored stitching you won't really see that so we're going to do an open channel on it and uh, make sure that's all visible. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, everyone, so we've got everything sanded down here. Um, we have to do this before we do the stitching, and I marked this off. This is where the blue is going to be going. This guy right here, we've got the Saphir Blue Seraphin. All right, grab a clean rag here. Well, at least somewhat clean. And get this blue on here. Now, seraphine cream will do very well as far as binding to the to the leather here. Now the red is a little bit of a different story, especially because we're using a seraphine cream here, um, and since we have a half sole, so we'll, we're going to give this uh, just a minute to kind of dry, and then I'm going to buff it up. Then we're going to take off the tape, and then on this back side here from behind the half sole, we're gonna use Angelus Walk on Red, which is a little bit thicker basically than what we're doing here. It's gonna be more of a true red, in other words. And it's gonna do very well because we're going to be able to basically overlap the half sole just ever so slightly, in other words, so that it actually protects that point. A lot of times on Western boots, if they have nails originally we'll run some nails right there where the half sole is but because this one is only stitched and running nails and there's not the best of ideas usually um, then it's a good idea to have some extra reinforcement on that connection point between the original sole and the half sole and the uh, Angelus walk on red will give us just that little extra bit that we can definitely use once it all dries nicely All right, and this stuff is gonna dry pretty quick, so I can run it over to the buffer here in just a minute, and then I'll redo the tape. Get a little bit more on here. Now we 
we go. So I'm gonna run this over to the buffer real quick. It's gonna take more time for me to transition the camera and everything, but it's just one of our shoe shine buffers basically to buff it up a little bit and then I'll be able to take the tape off and reapply a new one to get ready for the Angelus walk on red. So I'll see you guys back just in a minute. All right, so I moved over the tape a little bit and give you kind of a better view or understanding of it. So we've got that tape right there overlapping that half sole just ever so slightly. I'm gonna have to use a new piece of tape there, but it overlaps it ever so slightly, so it's going to end up basically covering that transition nicely and make it a little more smooth, in other words. But definitely need some new fresh tape. That that tape was not one to stick and not gonna be not gonna be all that nice in other words, so there we go. Alright, got the Angelus walk on red here, and I'm gonna apply it with a sponge. A sponge is gonna be just a little bit smoother for something like this. Goal first is to get the first layer on there and have it really bind and soak into the leather and basically I'm gonna have to go through this a few with a few coats in other words because if I ju just use the um, the red color of the seraphim cream it still has a little bit of translucence I mean you can see that with the blue there it shows that leather which is kind of nice but on the back here it's probably a good idea to have a couple of good coats on here so that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do and just kind of build up a nice coat until it's nice and smooth and everything so let me go ahead and get that taken care of i do hope that it's all drying quickly because we still have to stitch this and uh it, majority of the time it's just better to stitch this th this half sole area while the sole still has the seraphim cream not fully dry and, and it dries in fairly short amount of time completely we're going to say about half an hour considering how much we really tried pushing into the leather there and plus jr doesn't absorb uh liquid so well in other words it tries wicking it out so we're gonna have to work at it a little quickly so i'll see you back here in just a little bit when it's time to go ahead and stitch these all right everyone so i had a little bit of a technical difficulty my videos i guess something happened they just didn't record in other words ended up cutting out the toe tips here for the triumph toe tips there and then i'd gone ahead and stitched all around here and unfortunately all that was lost i know some of you are going to be very frustrated and upset i'm sorry i really am sorry about it but to at least kind of give you a general idea here so i've got this one right here all finished up well at least to a degree uh, so for the half soles typically we usually stitch from about where we cut the stitches around to the opposite side where they're stitched right there and that's typically how half soles are done anyways because we're now removing the whole heel base and that's also the other reason why we don't have the top lifts on because the machine catches on this heel base right there so we're not able to get as close as we'd like to and so instead we finish it out at kind of a good comfortable point that overlaps where the half sole and the original sole meet together that way you get a good durability and there's no structural offsetting or anything like that um, i mean it's not going to cause any kind of damage if we're able to go back further but the only time that it's you know stitched all the way or all the way underneath the heel base is again either with the full sole or you know specialty type of jobs like we've done like orthopedic type work where we had to do installations for the heel base area and we were just doing half soles on it so those are the kind of cases that it's done and sorry got interrupted there but uh shoot where was i but yeah, so I mean, as far as like the stitching there, it's going to keep everything nicely intact. Um, typically with, say, like a, a different version of a Western boot, which I kind of wish, uh, actually I'll just grab one over here. Got this area here. You can see possibly on, on this that um, these have stitching that only goes down to like right here. And that's typically where the welt ends, which is like a half welt. And then the rest of this area gets nailed down usually. And so, you know, nails will hold in that arch area in some cases where this boot has a full stitch, but 
we left the original stitches underneath here and we had to uh, stop the stitches a little bit before the original ones. Sorry, I gotta put this boot back. But that kind of gives you some perspective and ideas of what everything's going on. But since we got at least to this point here, now we can go ahead and put the toe plates on. Mark where the holes are with this little punch tool that I have. This is the same one that's slightly curved. Well, it's an awl, but it's like a really good multi-tool. just works for a number of purposes for me. Pre-punch the holes. Actually, I had a cobbler the other day ask me, do you pre-punch the holes for your toe plates and stuff? I'm like, of course. Because apparently, there's a handful of cobblers that don't pre-punch them, like those little holes to get the uh, toe plate lined up and then have the screws go in a little more efficiently. I thought that was kind of interesting to hear. I mean, it doesn't do any kind of harm like it doesn't do too much harm whatsoever aesthetically or structurally it's just more that it takes a lot more work and effort to do that so it's kind of shocking and you have the higher probability of these screws snapping and everything in the wrong places where you don't want them to so that's why i was like that's uh that's interesting so i guess whatever works for some it's interesting sometimes you hear because in our industry in our industry we have a number of ways that some cobblers do certain jobs and everything and uh, it's just interesting to hear how it goes but it's the way it is I guess but it looks like uh, we're all done with this port now portion and tap corners down just a little bit sometimes it helps everything sit a little nicer push down just a little bit right there make sure all of that is doing good and we're still going to do a little bit of decorative line across here the gentleman had requested so um, but we'll do that later when we do one last final coat of um, creams and stuff because afterwards the tape ended up kind of pulling up some of the bluing right there might be able to see it and we just want to make sure we get one more final coat but we'll do that towards the end anyways on both the red and the blue portion but for now i need to sand up this heel just a little bit more because we got some red there sand that up and then uh start gluing the top lift on there now these ones in particular have a standard top lift heel kind of like this one right here so that's usually what goes on to these there are other types of heels also for western boot heels that are different as well where there are uh, holes to run nails in and everything but that's not what we're doing with these we are doing the jr combination heel again by request of the customer so we're gonna go ahead and get that all lined up right there i'm doing the jr dovetail heel i have to double check what color he wanted exactly on this i believe he said blue as well about to check his uh, awesome sketches that he did. It's pretty cool that he put in the time and effort for it. But let me make sure I adjust this because, again, these kind of come, you know, curved like that for a dress heel where a western boot heel is just straight across. And uh, before I do that, I really want to make sure I cut this a little more straight to make sure everything is evened out and leveled beautifully and we get as much of that rubber on there as well for longer life expectancy without removing that jr logo in other words too so let me go ahead and get that taken care of with some sanding um again sand that up to get some of that red off there because this red doesn't exactly work well with adhesives and we want to make sure we get as much surface area to adhere especially at these corners and we've got to make sure that we got a good bonding surface there so let me go ahead and take care of that and i'll be back here in just a few oh and also rough this up because obviously it's not roughed up there so see you back in a handful or in a few i don't know why i said a handful in a few yeah
all right everyone so i had to get the top lift heel on there so it cures overnight but it's already done curing now we're over at our 100 grit sandpaper belt here which is going to sand off all that excess there which i've already cut as much as i can off without basically having to use a knife but now the sander is going to do uh this one at least is going to do majority of the removal of this heel right there we're not going to do the toe plate on this one because this one's too rough and it's going to do some ugly looking damage the rest of the boot we're going to go through afterwards on the uh, other sandpaper belt but before i actually sand that area out i have to make sure i get that color here taken care of on the jr uh heel before we really actually finish out the edges and everything so for now i thought i'd show you guys the 24 grit sandpaper sandpapering yeah uh, sandpaper belt machine that we have you can see that pile of dust there we had kind of a busy day with a lot of stuff going on haven't had a chance yet to clean it but this gives you an insight of how dusty these things sometimes get even with a dust collecting bag so let's go ahead and get started on it Alright everyone, so we've got the toe plates on and everything, and uh, got that heel kind of sanded up, but I don't know what it is with the heels on these, the leather here, it does not like absorbing anything. So we're going to go ahead and touch it up with a little bit more blue, royal blue from this old Miltonian, which turned out beautiful looking. So let me go ahead and I got it taped up, and uh, let's go ahead and get, get it. All right, everyone, so as you can tell, I was using that spray dye a little bit to kind of give it more bluing, in other words, which obviously I know it's it's more of an aesthetics thing. It's going to wear out and all that, but the parts that are left behind still regardless look great. So right now I'm actually cleaning off some of these areas. As you can see, the toe plate, it had a little bit of dye on it, but I kind of like it because I already did the other boot and I'm not going to show you yet. Uh, I'll let you guys check it out as we're going along. I uh, wanted that lettering there and numbering from the Triumph 150 being uh, being filled in with some blue there. I think it looks kind of cool, plus as well as the screws just a little bit. The screws are going to be cleaned up just a little more, but a little bit of blue on there looks kind of cool. And then the rubber heel area, we're going to clean this off, so. Now, I've had some questions before people have asked me, what's that stuff you use in the liquid bottle? It's uh, called Toluene. And dang it, I'm going to have to use a Q-tip. Just a little bit. I accidentally got it. Got some of that blue off. It's called toluene. It's a type of turpentine, basically. Um, works great for deactivating adhesives and cleaning things up as well. It's a little bit stronger than acetone. It's kind of interesting. It's a lot like a thinner, almost, in other words. And um, when, uh, when you're using the two, whether it's acetone or thinner, one thing that was always interesting to me is that when you use acetone, it feels cold, like 
even with gloves, it just feels cold. Where tolling is the other way around, it feels warmer. So, just thought I'd mention something that's a little interesting. Let's see, hoping my hat doesn't get in the way here. Just a little bit of blue there in the letters. Okay, pull this guy up. And we're gonna have to touch up that red anyways, plus the red is gonna be on the inside here. We did have to obviously sand that out to make sure it's leveled, or not so much leveled, but evened out. So we're gonna touch that up a little bit all around the sole area there. got just a little too much on the sponge da, 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 da. trying to wipe it off the top there just just a smidge okay I think that's good enough to touch up right now for, for that red there that's why I have all these rags that have all these colors Just keep finding little corners here and there and all that kind of stuff so uh, yeah I gotta take this glove off anyways because our next step is nails <coughs> Oh. Now, one of the last things we'll do is uh, probably clean up, actually, the JR logo, at least here. This one here, however, it doesn't really have a gold on it, usually, and even if it does have a gold, which some do, there's no, there's no indicator. If it's gold, that's just the gold leafing on there. It doesn't mean it's a more premium version or anything like that. It's just that JR, you know has has stamping with gold or brown so they uh they can do whatever they want if they want to make it pink or purple they can but it doesn't change the fact that it's still a jr leather sole and there's not one that's better than the other so just wanted to give you guys a heads up but this one i at least want to remove some of the bluing there and let that gold leaf show through Again, just aesthetics. He's probably gonna wear through on the first first go around, but just a little bit. It's uh, still got that blue hue to it, but if I really try to clean it out and everything, one, it's gonna remove the blue around the letters, and two, it's gonna look a little funny in other words. So that was just enough to bring out that gold there. And uh, yeah, so now at this point, make sure I close that off. I'm gonna go ahead and mark up the nails. So I've got this compass tool, basically. There's a proper term for the for the ones that's for leather work. I can't remember what it is, but we have a preset at a certain distance, and that way we have the nails spaced out apart equally. So, now as far as the nails go, um, I think I've mentioned this in one of my previous well a few of my previous videos as well as uh the soul talk sunday episode where i talked about the jr heels in particular um there's a slight dilemma sometimes with these jr dovetail heels i've noticed that the leather the leather after all is glued over top of a rubber the same rubber right here that's on the back end of the jr dovetail and it has a tendency to slightly peel up so you uh you may come across that issue but that's why a number of us cobblers will run some nails in there and it gives it a little extra reinforcement so now on the back end of the heel what i'm actually doing here is i'm going to be adding some nails just three right there 
and it's going to be these longer ones here so that they last much longer and hang in there good because that is first point of impact after all and uh, gives us some extra durability so that's why I was marking it there on the back side my workbench right now is a mess it's the end of the week and uh, I'm all over the week all over the uh, place trying to get stuff finished out usually what happens in the beginning of the week is I've everyone's working here at the shop and it's so noisy in here that i can't really uh do any kind of recording even in the morning because one of our guys he gets here fairly early sometimes and then trying to stay after hours with the family is a lot of times a no-go but right now i've got a number of things i have to finish out If you're wondering what I'm doing now, I am pre-punching the holes for the nails because if I go straight to the nails, the problem is a nail can bend, a nail can go sideways or crooked, and so this uh, this awl here is the one that we use to pluck the stitches and everything. Um, you know, pre-punches the hole, and you don't have that issue. So now we just put all these brass little nails in. So on the leather portion, we just need the short ones. They don't uh, they don't serve much other purpose other than one aesthetics and ho and two holding the leather down. And these things are just the perfect uh, perfect uh, length. Oh, I can't talk right now. Perfect length to sit and uh, hold everything in place. Get some more. And if you're wondering. These aren't very readily available. I actually could not find anything even remotely close anywhere here in the States. I had to order these from Europe. So, yeah. Just wanted to let everybody know. Having to order these from Europe, you know, just, just to have better looking nails. Because we do have other nails here that we can get that are more readily available. They're a little... Uh, wonky looking I guess they're not so rounded on the heads and everything but these however are a lot better more aesthetically pleasing they hold up better um, you know appearance wise these are a round head I like the round heads for the back of the nail back of the heel area mainly because they they tend to have small ribbing on the side of it that's that's almost not noticeable and the way it sits inside everything it works better with the rubber the flathead versions that you may see us use sometimes for like the arch area here on western boots a lot of times they uh they work better when it's just strictly leather well there's a lot more rubber underneath this jr leather pad and yeah you want something that will hold up with the rubber oh no it just slipped on me and Dang it, I'm going to touch up that blue again. And right now I'm using my punch tool to punch everything a little bit down so these heads don't stick out too much or anything like that. Again, aesthetically more pleasing and also doesn't let the, uh, doesn't let the uh, boot become slippery in some of those areas. I had, that was a problem where I had a pair of uh, JR heels where I had a bunch of nails everywhere and gentleman came back and he's like um I'm kind of sliding all over the place I'm like oh shoot all right yep well good I'm taken care of so lesson learned now the ones on the back here I really don't need to punch because as you can tell, they are significantly longer than the ones I've been putting in here. And they're going down a lot better because they're going through the rubber into the heel base. These things basically countersink themselves in into the rubber without needing to use a punch. And I learned my lesson another time too. The rubber does not like being punched. I accidentally whacked it once and the whole thing just went Phew. All the way down in there, I had to tear off the whole heel and redo it all. So, another lesson learned. <laughs> but, where are my oh, Q-tips? 
Just a little bit, just a little, just a little. Across there. Now I am going to put a uh, finish over top of it. It's like a spray on spray shine is what it's called along with some silicones and I know everyone's gonna be thinking like ah oh, silicones are bad yes they are bad on your leather uppers um, on here because we have such a heavy finish coat and everything it is to protect the finish so don't be getting all fussy and frustrated oh no he put silicone on there that is very normal when it comes to having to put a heavy finish coat like this um, you know so so that it kind of protects it for a nicer period of time. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray that on. I do have to do it over there. It's again, just literally spraying it on, letting it sit and dry. And then we're gonna go ahead and start sanding things out and finishing out the edges. And we're pretty much done other than just a quick upper treatment with conditioners and all that. So let me go ahead and do that and we'll switch over to the machine when it's time to sand everything. So you can check out all the beautiful sparks flying from the toe plates there. So let's So we've got it all finished out. I don't know if you can possibly see it there, but there's a little bit of tooling that I did with one of these here. The customer had requested to run it across. It's it's just a little bit of aesthetics there, to just kind of give it some depth, I guess you can call it. But uh, yeah, gone across right there and kind of finished it out a little bit more with the clear coat. Now, obviously the, the color here is going to wear out at least uh, in the ball of the foot area here and on the heel. Um, so it's gonna be up to the customer if they wanna touch it up later down the road or what exactly. But at least uh, it's a JR sole here with the Triumph toe plate. So he's gonna have great durability on that JR dovetail heel. It's gonna look aesthetically a little more pleasing. And with those little bit of heel uh, nails there that we put on the back right there, it's going to help reinforce that significantly. So I've got that all taken care of. The edges had gone around and varnished them, touched up a little bit of the color on the welt uppers here because the welt does sometimes get a little beaten up and uh, touched up the bottom portion with at least the seraphim cream from Saphir to kind of restore some of the color and uh, pate deluxe wax on the edges to shine it up just a little bit more and then on the shaft I used a uh, renovator cream to kind of give it some conditioning obviously but at this point we're all done this is for half soles this is one method of doing it typically on most western boots we don't really do actually an open channel stitch because as you can tell the uh the connection point it's closed channel to open channel so it's a little little different and off sometimes but you know uh to really be able to showcase the blue stitching we did that for him and there's no nothing different majorly between the two between closed channel or open channel in other words closed channel just covers up those stitches for a longer period of time which is one benefit of it but the open channel does feature the color of whatever's going on there a little bit better so um, 
there are options always just wanted to point that out now obviously with a half sole there's going to be certain limitations um, I mean even back here trying to make this all red right here obviously there's gonna be original like little nicks and scratches and everything that are very hard to you know smooth out on a sander and make it perfect just because of all the nicks and scratches if we have to really get them out we can sometimes sand through that sole just way too far but wanted to mention that that's that's one of the drawbacks with the half sole is if you want it to look good sometimes it can't turn out perfect because you may have a number of scratches and nicks in there so that can happen but anyways i hope you enjoyed the video if you have any questions or comments leave them down below don't forget to subscribe and uh, at the time of this video if you go to our website cobblersplus.com uh, at the time of the recording, I don't have an option set up for half soles and heels quite yet, but I'm sure by the time I finally get through the editing and everything, I'll have that option on our website, but you can always keep up and see what's going on on there. Again, cobblersplus.com, check out what other options we may have available for you. And uh, yeah, don't forget to give a thumbs up also because apparently YouTube's algorithm helps our channel grow. The more likes and shares there are obviously sharing will help grow the channel as well. So like and share the video and we'll see you next time.